Oh, right. What's this? Okay. Now you might be saying, I've seen this NeoPixel blank a thousand times. Yeah, but have you seen it running on a CH32 V203 G6? Well, today you have. Um, so working on finishing up this Cutie Pie, uh, like I said, WCH Risk Five processor, very inexpensive. It's like 38 cents, 35 cents in quantity. Um, but it's really powerful, 144 megahertz, 10K SRAM, and 32K of zero weight flash, plus maybe some extra flash. Um, working on getting all the peripherals working, and I uh, just got NeoPixel going. This is like another one I've just got wired up over here. To do the code, I've actually, um, you know, it's in Arduino because I'm using the Arduino IDE, which is, which is what makes it so much fun. Um, I actually kind of just made a quick bit bang version of the NeoPixel write function just in my sketch. Um, and then just raw writing that data. So it's not integrated into the NeoPixel library yet, uh, but it's working. So now we know what we have to do to get it integrated. Um, and then of course, if you want to do even more NeoPixels, you can use the PWM or SPI peripheral, but this will let you bit bang on any pin, which is great. And it looks wonderful. So I'm uh, really excited to see this hardware fully tested and ready for booking. All right, lady, what's this? Okay, what I've got here is this is my WCH 32V203. So it's a Risk V processor, very low cost, and I've got it wired up to a potentiometer. And over here on my monitor, I've got a plot. And so you can see as I twist, twist the potentiometer, the plot goes up and down. So is this interesting? Yes. Why? Because if you look over here, this is happening in Arduino using teeny USB. So all I have to do is import the teeny USB header and I can set up USB CDC through the USB port all in Arduino. So it's a lot easier to use than make files, although if you want to use make files, go for it. With teeny USB support, um, we can now use the built-in USB port to send data. So we have to make it all smaller. It uses a lot of flash memory, um, but it works quite well. Nice and fast too. You can see uh, quick updates to the data coming out from the analog read. So yeah, more hardware testing. Going to get this into the store soon. All right, what's this? OK, so my favorite thing about the Cutie Pie boards, which are based on the Xiao format from Seed, is the QT part, the systemic QT port, which means you can plug and play like hundreds of different sensors from the Quick, uh, systemic QT, Pico, whatever. Look, lots of people have similar JST SH connectors. Um, for I squared C sensors. So for example, here I've got my favorite uh, easy to use temperature and humidity sensor, the HD20. And I've got it plugged into this Cutie Pie CH32. This is one that's soldered to a board. The only thing is, is that we're still working on getting the USB serial through the USB port to be like less space consumption-y because it's like using up all the flash. And we don't quite know how to map the external flash in yet. Um, so right now I'm actually just using the hardware UART, so RX and TX into a USB serial like FTDI cable. But as you can see on my computer, it's getting, if I breathe on it, get the RH a little bit higher. You can see the temperature and humidity are coming just fine. And the best part is this is just the default I squared C wire demo for the HT20 library in Arduino. So I don't have to do anything special to compile it. It's exactly the same demo um, everyone else runs, except now it's running on a low-cost RISC-V processor. Very exciting. And that's up to